When working with long, complex blocks of code, it's a good practice to leave comments that explain the function of the code. This helps you remember the purpose of the code and is especially useful if a third party will be working on the same script, such as another programmer or a team of programmers. JavaScript allows for single line or multi-line comments. In this HTML file, we have a sample of both. The first is a single line comment represented by the double slash. It's placed above an executable JavaScript function. This means the JavaScript function will still be executed. We can see the result in our web browser. The word test is outputted using the inner HTML function. In our next example, we've prevented a line of JavaScript code from executing by converting it into a comment. You can see that we've placed the double slash in front of the JavaScript code. So for this reason, the word paragraph is not outputted in our browser, despite using the inner HTML function. If we remove the comment, the code does execute. Lastly, we have an example of a multi-line comment, and these are best used for explanations of large code blocks. To create one, use the slash and asterisk combination. JavaScript constants are values that are fixed. For example, in this script, we're adding two values, 5 and 6, together and outputting the result in a paragraph with the ID math. The values that we're adding are fixed values, 5 and 6. The value of these numbers is not dependent on any other factor. The 5 will always be 5, and the 6 will always be 6, unless we change them in the script. Let's preview this file to see the result in our web browser. Here we can see the outputted result 11. Constants can be in the form of numbers, both whole and integer, or strings. Strings are written within double or single quotes. We'll go ahead and change one of these values to a string. Now when we save the file and reload our web browser, we can now see that my text is joined with the value 6. We touched on variables in the introduction of this course. Variables are a very important concept to understand when it comes to programming in any language, including JavaScript. Unlike JavaScript constants, variables are named containers that can store a single value or multiple values. These values can change based on user inputs or other factors. Let's take a look at a basic example of how variables can be used to store values. In this JavaScript code, we've declared three variables, variable x, y, and z. You can think of each variable as a container. The variables each contain their own value. The value of variable x is 10. The value of variable y is 15. The value of variable z is equal to the sum of variable x and y, which in this case would be 25, or 10 plus 15. Now let's output the value of C using the getElementById output method. We'll output the result in a paragraph with the ID demo. Now let's save our file and preview it in our web browser to see the results.
Here we can see our heading, JavaScript variables, and our paragraph, working with variables. And underneath that, we can see the result has been outputted. So variable x has been added to variable y, and the result has been outputted to 25. In our example, the x, y, and z name we attach to the variable are known as variable identifiers. Each variable you declare must have a unique identifier. We used very short identifiers, but as we progress through the course, we will be using more descriptive identifiers. For example, color, shape, size, age, and weight. These would all be considered more descriptive. There are some general rules when selecting identifier names. Names can contain letters, digits, underscores, and dollar signs. Names must begin with a letter. Names are case sensitive. Reserved words, like JavaScript keywords, cannot be used as names. JavaScript variables can hold numbers like 100 or 10.5 or text values, for example, John Smith. Text values are known as text strings. Strings must be written in single or double quotes. Numbers can be written without quotes. If you put quotes around a number, it will be treated as a string. For the sake of this example, let's change our numerical value 15 to a text value. Now when we save our file and refresh our browser, we can see that the numerical value 10 stored within the x va variable has been attached to the string contained within variable y. The output is contained within variable z, which equals x plus y. In JavaScript, the equal sign is an assignment operator. This sounds more confusing than it is. It just means that the value of the left operand is equal to the right operand. In the equation, x equals y, the equal sign assigns the value of y to x. This is important because it allows us to compute values of two different data types, such as numbers and strings. Let's take a look at an example. In this JavaScript code, we're adding a numerical value with a text string. If we save the file and preview it in our web browser, we can see that the numerical value 30 is attached to the text string hats. Arithmetic operators are used to perform arithmetic on numbers, both constants and variables. This chart provides a quick overview of the different operators that can be used. Now let's go over some examples to see how each one works. We'll begin by adding two numerical values. In between our open and close script tags, we'll create a variable called x. The value of x will be 100 plus 50. Next, we'll create our get element by ID. And the ID will be the word add. Now we'll go ahead and create the paragraph that'll contain the outputted value. OK, 
And now let's go ahead and save our file and preview it in our web browser. And we can see that we get the value 150, which is the correct value. Now let's go ahead and perform another calculation. This time we'll add two values and multiply the result by the value of another variable. So let's go ahead and define two variables. Variable A, which will equal 3. Variable B, which will equal 20 plus 30 multiplied by A. So in this case, it'll be multiplied by 3. Now we'll just create our output. Uh, we'll call the ID add2. And we'll display the result underneath our first calculation. And we'll save the file and refresh our web browser. So here we have, once again, 150 outputted. Okay, so that would be uh, 20 plus 30, which is 50, multiplied by 3, which equates to 150. Okay, in this next example, we'll subtract two values. We'll call the variable C, and we'll do 100 minus 50, and this time we'll give it the ID sub, and we'll output the result at the bottom of our other two calculations. And there we have it. So that's how we multiply, add, and subtract. In this lesson, we'll explore a few other arithmetic operators. We'll begin with division. In this example, we'll divide two values together. We'll start by declaring a variable. We'll call it D. The value of D will be 100 divided by 50. Next, we'll set up our output. We'll call the ID div i. And we'll set up a paragraph in our body tag to display the output. And once we save our file, we'll go ahead and preview it in our, in our web browser. And we can see that the correct value is outputted. Next, we'll increment the value of variable. So to do that, uh, for this example, we'll, we'll go ahead and declare a, a variable called x and give it the value of 5. Next, type in x plus plus and a semicolon. This will increment the value of x by 1. So if x equals 5, the next value up would be 6. We'll store the incremented value in a variable called z. And then we'll go ahead and set up our output. Now we'll go ahead and save the file and refresh our web browser and we can see the value 6 outputted below our last calculation. We can also decrement the value of a variable. So instead of going up, 
uh, this time we'll set up a calculation, or sorry, an arithmetic that decreases the value of the variable. So instead of going from 5 to 6, we'll go from 5 to 4. We'll set up a new variable, and we'll call this variable h. Next type in h minus minus and the semicolon. We'll store the new value in a variable called k and set up our output. I will save our file and refresh our web browser and we can see that uh, the value of k is outputted. Operator precedence determines the order in which operations are performed in an arithmetic expression. As in traditional school mathematics, the order of computations follows the following sequence. Brackets, exponents, division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. To illustrate this example, let's take a look at a basic equation. Here, we have 50 plus 200 in brackets multiplied by 3. In this equation, 50 would be added to 200 first. The result would then be multiplied by 3. We'll go ahead and test this in our web browser. And we can see we get the correct result, 750.